Good day class, we are now on third quarter chemistry. So welcome to science time again. This is Ma'am Renz. For our third quarter module 1, the title is Does Matter Matter? Now this is the answer sheet on the last page of your module. You're going to write all the answers from module 1 this is also your pattern for your ISM for our most essential learning competencies you have to or we have to explain the properties of solids liquids and gases based on the particle nature of matter for our objectives we have to identify and describe the classification of matter based on its physical state, solids, liquids, and gases. Next, differentiate the structure of solids, liquids, and gases based on its mass and volume. Next, differentiate the structure of solids, liquids, and gases based on its shape and molecular arrangement. And differentiate the structure of solids, liquids, and gases based on its movement of molecules. Now, let's answer first three tests. Number one, if an ice cube is left out in an open environment, it will change from one state of matter to another, which is the correct order of the state of matter that the ice cube will go through a solid liquid gas b gas solid liquid c liquid gas solid or d solid gas liquid next number two which of the following is not a physical property of matter a mass b melting point C. Volume D. Flammability Number 3. Which statement is correct about the molecules of a solid? A. The molecules are randomly moving B. The molecules are closely packed C. The molecules are loosely packed D. The molecules are moving at a fast speed Number 4. Marco used a triple beam balance to measure the amount of matter in the stone. He also used a graduated cylinder to measure the space occupied by the stone. What properties of matter are being described in Marco's activity? A. Mass and hardness B. Volume and flexibility C. Mass and volume D. Volume and Malleability Number 5. What happens to the molecules of a gas when it is heated? A. It will not move B. It will slightly move C. It will move slowly D. It will randomly move at a fast speed If you are true answering our pretest, let's check. For number one, correct answer is A, solid liquid gas. For number two, it's a letter D, flammability. For number three, it's letter B, the molecules are closely packed. For number four, the correct answer is letter C, mass and volume. For number 5, it's letter D. It will randomly move at a fast speed. Now, let's go over to the next page of your module, looking back. So, the direction is simple. You have to identify what is being asked by filling the missing letter in the box. So, it's from 1 to 10. There are already given letters, 
so I think that is very easy for you to answer. For the brief introduction, we have three states of matter and they are commonly known as solids, liquids, and gases. There are many examples of solids. These are the, the pictures shown on your screen. So we have here hat, pencil, skateboard, snow, table, bicycle, apple, computer, tree house. Now these are all solids. For the liquids, the following examples are milk, water in pool, drinks like orange juice, apple juice, hot chocolate, soup, the rain, and any kind of drink. Next, examples of gases. We have here the wind, the air inside the balloon, the hot air balloon, the wind from fan, the steam from the iron, the wind and the fog. These are all gases. Now what is matter? Matter is defined as anything that occupies space and has mass. Take note of the two words space and mass. Matter is all the substances that make up the universe. So mostly, they are the ones that make up the universe. The common examples, although there are many states of matter, the common examples are solid, liquid, gas, including the fourth state, which is plasma. But we are more... Uh, tackling about solid, liquid, and gas for today's lesson. Now, if we have matter, we also have non-matter. So, ngayon lang natin narinig yung non-matter. Now, when we say non-matter, is the opposite of matter. It is defined as anything that does not occupy space and has no mass. Examples, gravity, sound, light, heat, electricity. So, yung gravity, pag hinila tayo, pag hinila tayo ng gravity at hindi tayo lumutang no, sa ground, wala namang space yun na inoccupy. Wala din siyang mass. So, it's just a force. It's a force. Okay? Sound. Hindi naman tayo tumatabi kapag may naririnig tayong sound kasi hindi naman siya nag-occupy ng space at wala siyang bigat. Ganun din yung light. Pag tinamaan ka ng flashlight sa mukha mo, hindi ka naman tumatabi. Hindi mo sinasabing, ay, ang bigat. Ang bigat nung light. Hindi, di ba? Including heat. Kapag nilalagnat ba tayo, sasabi mo, ay, bumibigat ako. Pag wala ka na naglat, ay, gumaan ako. Hindi, di ba? Kasi hindi naman siya matter. Non-matter siya. And electricity. So, uh, maraming chemists yung nagsasabi na yung electricity in terms of the energy uh, it's non-matter. But, if it is more on the electrons flowing, it's matter. But since we categorize electricity here for non-matter ang ibig sabihin dito ay yung energy na binibigay niya okay so it's considered as a non-matter since we already know the difference between matter and non-matter we'll focus more on matter so these are the common three states of matter these are the molecular structure of the states of matter. So, we have here solid, 
So as we can see, they are very compressed and the arrangement is uh, compactly arranged. Nakafix yung position niya. The blue colors are the atom. While the liquid, it takes the shape of the container. As we can see, they are loosely packed. For the gases, they are randomly packed or they are far from each other compared to liquid and solid. While plasma, as we add more heat to the states of matter, the gas becomes plasma wherein there are electrons already or charged particles. Plasma is also called ions. Okay? Now, as we can see the arrow, from solid to plasma, we are adding more heat. So, the more na nadadagdagan yung init, the more na mag-iiba at mag-iiba ang state of matter. So, from solid, madagdagan ng init, magiging liquid. Liquid, dagdagan mo pa ng init, magiging gas. Gas, dagdagan mo pa ng, ng heat, will turn into plasma. Okay? Now, Let's give a warm-up activity. You will tell if it is matter or non-matter. Sound. Light. I think you're, you have to write it on a piece of paper. So, later we can check if you're correct or not. Okay, let me repeat. Sound. Matter or non-matter. Next, light, matter or non-matter. Next, gravity. Next, heat. Electricity. Now, all of these sound light gravity heat electricity are these are all non matter they does not occupy space and has no mass now let us further discuss the properties of matter we have two categories for the properties of matter. The first one is the physical properties and the next is the chemical properties. Let's have first physical properties. When we say physical properties, uh, those are uh, properties that can be observed and measured without changing the chemical composition of matter. So, kung ano yung itsura nila, yung size, yung shape, uh, yung structure, basta hindi magbago yung chemical composition, physical properties pa din yun. Kasi physical lang ang nagbago. Sila pa din yun. Yun pa din yung object na yun. So, for the physical properties, we have extensive and intensive properties under physical properties. So, when we say extensive properties, these are anything or these are physical properties that are related to the size of matter. While the intensive, these are not related to size of matter, but both of them uh, change or can be observed and measured from their physical aspect. Okay? So, let's have examples of extensive, extensive physical properties. Example, inertia. Related siya sa size because the greater, the greater the mass, greater inertia. The lesser the mass, lesser inertia. So, sinasusukat natin siya. Paano? Yun nga, yung greater, lesser. Di ba nasusukat natin kung how great, how less? Yan yung inertia. Inertia is our topic from Newton's first law of motion. So, it has something to do with 
liquid um, dimas. Pag malaki, mahirap pahintuin, mahirap pagalawin. Pag magaan, mas madaling pagalawin, mas madaling pahintuin. Okay? Next, when we say mass, related pa din siya sa size ng matter. Pwede ding weight. Related pa din siya sa size ng matter. Kasi natitimbang, di ba? So, anong pinagkaiba ng mass sa weight? Yung mass constant, fixed siya. Kung 45 kg ka sa earth, 45 kg ka pa rin. Pag pumunta ka sa ibang uh, sa ibang planets. Pero pag sinabi natin weight, yun na yung mag-iiba. Kung 45 kg ka sa earth, tas pumunta ka sa Jupiter, 45 kg ka rin in terms of your mass. Pero yung weight mo mag-iiba na. Kasi, weight is mass times gravity. So, you have to multiply your constant, yung mass mo, times dun sa gravity ng planet na yun. Dito sa atin, if you are 45 kg, yun yung mass mo, ang weight mo is imumultiply mo sa uh, 9.8 yun, sa 9.8 meter per second squared and that is your gravity. Yung 9.8 na yan, yun yung gravity natin sa Earth. Pero iba yan pagdating sa iba't ibang planeta. Okay? So, next naman. Length. Ayan, nasusukat pa din yan. If you use ruler, ma, na minsan may centimeter doon, millimeter, minsan naman inches or centimeter or inches, millimeter. So, maraming, maraming um, units in measuring the length. No? Hindi lang centimeter, hindi lang millimeter, hindi lang inches. Pwede ding foot, pwede ding meters, kilometers ayan, so nasusukat pa din siya next, when we say volume naman when we say volume naman uh, ito yung kung gaano yung space na na-occupy niya ayan, so pag mas malaki yung yung isang area isang lalagyan, mas malaki yung kanyang volume or capacity. Okay? So, still, related pa din siya sa size. Ang volume ay length times width times height. So, C, related pa din siya sa size ng matter. How about intensive physical property? So, lahat ng hindi related sa size, pero physical pa rin ang nababago na observe at na measure papatak siya under intensive physical properties ano ano yung mga yon example odor o yung amoy di ba amoy mabango amoy sampagita amoy rose hindi siya related sa size pero physically na observe mo siya including the colors kung anong color yung isang object, di ba? Yung mga ball pens, yung mga lalagyan nun, may green, may blue, may black, but still, pen pa din siya. Okay? Yung luster, yun yung kinang na isang object. Density, kung gano'ng kasiksik. Lagi nga tayong may sinasabi, di ba? Na, ano ang mas mabigat? Isang kilong pako o isang kilong ah, uh, bulak sinasabi ng iba isang kilo pa ako pero sa totoo niyan isang kilo is isang kilo whether anong object yan okay uh, pagdating dun sa kung gaano siya kasiksik halimbawa naman yung paper yung paper na nakakrumple versus dun sa paper na hindi nakakrumple so mas siksik naman doon yung uh, tag dito yung crumpled paper. Okay? Kasi mas masakit pag binato yung crumpled paper lalo na pag naglalaro kayong touching ball, di ba? Hindi mo naman pwedeng ibato yung hindi crumpled kasi lilipad-lipad na yung papel. 
Next, malleability. Yan, isa pang example. Later, makikita mo yung yung mga examples. Uh, for every properties, may mga pictures. Okay, so later papakita ko. Yan, malleability, solubility, ano pa, uh, electrical conductivity, boiling point, melting point, freezing, yan, mga intensive physical properties yan. Surface tension, ano yan, surface tension na yan, yung, yung spider, hindi naman nalulunod, tsaka langgam, ba diba? lumulutang siya. Yung papel, pag di nakakrumpled, uh, lumulutang siya, kasi may surface tension. Capillarity, ayan, uh, pag kinukunan tayo ng dugo, ba diba, minsan piniprick lang, sa daliri natin, tas may maliit na tube, tas sumusot na dun yung dugo, capillarity yon Sa so, lahat yan, na-observe, na may measure, nang hindi na babago yung chemical composition ng matter. So, pasok pa din siya sa physical properties. Yun nga lang, dahil hindi siya nasusukat, intensive physical property siya. So, ano yung mga examples nun? Ayan. Ito yung mga examples ng physical properties under extensive so na may measure to related to size inertia ayan masyadong magaan yung katawan so yung impact niya mabilis siyang tatalsek okay lesser mass lesser inertia ayan mass nasusukat siya di ba so extensive length nasusukat extensive volume length times width times height ayan so volume nasusukat. Ito naman yung mga examples ng physical intensive properties. So, yun pa din yung object na yun. Nasusukat pa din siya um, via other observations pero hindi na siya related sa size o odor. Ayan. Color. Luster, yung kinang ng mga gems. Density. Ang density ay hindi lang para sa solids. Okay? Meron din siya sa liquids, meron din siya sa gas. So, dito nakikita natin yung solids and liquids. No? Yung bolt, yung pinaka-dense. Kasi nasa baba siya. Yung ping-pong ball, yung pinaka-magaan. Okay? So, pinaka-siksik hanggang sa pinaka-magaan nasa taas. Ganun din sa liquid. Honey, mas mabigat kumpara sa corn soup, sa lulutang si corn soup. Pero, mas maga, magaan naman si maple syrup, kesa kay corn syrup. Then, milk, mas magaan kesa kay maple. Pero, mas magaan si dish, washing soap, kesa kay milk. Pero, mas magaan si water kesa kay dish, washing soap. Makikita natin yan, pag gumagamit kayo ng mga dish washing, naglalagay kayo sa sa basin sa planggana o kaya sa kahit anong lalagyan tapos ididilute mo yung dishwashing liquid mo ng water pumapaibabaw yung water tapos yung dishwashing liquid nasa ilalim mas magaan naman ang vegetable oil kesa water pero mas magaan si rubbing alcohol kesa sa vegetable oil o wag magtaka mang ba't may kulay syempre ano yan eh Uh, nilagyan ng color para makita nyo na mas pumapaibabaw at pumapailalim yung mga examples. Then, the lamp oil, clear naman talaga yan, pero nilagyan lang ng color, no? Para makita nyo na mas lumulutang yung isa, bumababa yung isa. And then, ayun na. So, that's density. Sa gas, may ganun din. Kaso, mahirap eh. Kasi, ang hirap uh, hulihin ng gas. Okay. Next naman natin, malleability. Yan, ability ng isang object na ma-pound into thin sheets and makat natin siya. Uh, solubility. Ayan, nakita natin yung rock salt. No? Soluble siya. It's a something to do with the solute versus solvent. Yung concentration ng solution. So, physical uh, property lang yan. Kasi pag na-dissolve siya, malalasahan mo pa rin naman yung salt dun sa water. So, hindi siya related sa size pero uh, physical change or physical property siya. Ganun din yung malleability, no? 
kahit ma-pound mo siya into thin sheets, yan pa din yun. No object niya yan, na-pound lang. Then, this one, electrical conductivity. Ayan, so kung paano siya nagpapailaw ng uh, isang lamp. Then, yung boiling naman natin ng water, ganun pa din naman yan. Water pa din siya na nag-turn into vapor. Then, bumalik into water, no? Lalo na pag naobserbahan natin yan dun sa rice cooker, no? Pag natapos ng mag... mag-cook ng rice, may kita natin, uh, may water ulit dun sa ilalim ng takip, no? And then, melting point, ganun pa rin. Tubig pa rin naman yan na naging yellow. Yellow pa rin yan na magiging tubig. Ayan, freezing. So, ano pa din yan? Water pa din yan. Physical change. Ayan, surface tension. Anything na mas magaan pa kesa sa ating density ng water ay lulutang. Ayan, yung papel grasshopper, yan, lumulutay, mga langgam, yung mga mga spider, ayan, basa balance, ha, basa balance. Tayo, kapag nasusiming, di ba? Pag nafloating tayo, balance yan. So, surface tension. Capillarity, and ability ng uh, water na, na umakyat doon sa mga tin tubes. Capillarity yan. Next, chemical properties. Now, ito naman, these are properties that lead to a chemical change. So, magbabago yung physical niya kasi may nangyayari sa loob doon sa chemical property niya. So, nag-lead siya ng chemical change. Next, these are properties involved in chemical reaction. So, may mga pagbabago ng chemical na nagaganap sa loob ng katawan kaya malamang magbabago lahat sa kanya. Example, temperature change, formation of gases, formation of solid matter or precipitate, yun yung mga latak-latak, growth from within living organism, formation of odor, uh, formation of flame. So, ano yung mga examples yan? Ito yun. Temperature change. Say, for example, yung, uh, yung corn beef mainit siya, tas naging malamig tapos uh, ininit nyo tapos biglang lumamig or pinalamig nyo, then sa kanyo kinain, ano nagiging ending sumasakit yung tiyan nyo, diba? kasi nagbago na yung chemical um, properties nung mga nandoon sa corn beef, kaya minsan na food poison tayo, lalo na pa sa mga delata, diba? kaya ingat-ingat tayo sa pag hihit ng mga pagkain. Kasi di natin alam, kala natin pwede pa, pero yung totoo, may nagbabago na doon sa sa chemical nung pagkain. ba So, tama na yung at least twice mo siya na na, na reheat, then good for consumption na siya. Huwag nyo na siyang uh, patagalin pa ng dalawang araw. Ganun. Not unless may preservatives yun, no? To stop the, ano, I mean, to slow down the spoilage or yung pagkapanis, no? What else? Um, temperature change. Ano pa? O, halimbawa, yung buhay, tsaka patay. O, temperature change yun. Magbabago na yung chemical composition ng katawan pag namatay na, no? Kasi malamig na yan, tapos hanggang sa madedecompose na. So, temperature change. Next. Formation of gases. Formation, ibig sabihin may nabubuong gas mula dun sa isang chemical. No? So, pag nagbimix tayo ng mga substances, tapos umuusok siya, ayan, nagbabago na rin yung mismong uh, composition nun. Okay? Kaya, ingat-ingat tayo sa pagmimix ng mga substances kasi hindi natin alam, yung minimix natin ay hindi na siya yun. No? Pwede siyang nakakabuti, pwedeng nakakasama. Ayan. Basta pag may nakita kayong ganito na sa lab, lalo na sa laboratories, ingat tayo kaya we should wear goggles, laboratory gowns, ganyan. Mga safety precautions. Kasi once na uh, pumunta yung sa mata natin o kaya na-inhale natin, no, ano na siya eh. 
uh, minsan nakakasama sa katawan natin. So, ang indication na may nagaganap na chemical uh, change ay formation of gases, also temperature change. Another example, ayan, uh, yung pamumuo ng solid precipitate or solid matter, yun yung latak na tinatawag natin. Ayan yun. So, pag may hinalo kayong chemical, tas may latak tayong nabuo, nakuha, ayan, precipitate yung tawag doon. So, indication siya na may chemical change na naganap. Next, growth from within living organism. Buhay, may nabuhay. Ayan, di ba? O, tinan nyo to parang mga bread molds at ate. Ayan. So, may tumubo, no? Na another living organism. Doon sa isa pang uh, organism. Di ba? Uh, what else? O, yan. Kapag pregnant, nagbabago yung hormones, nagbabago yung chemical sa ating katawan, sa mga girls yun. tapos may may growth na another living sa katawan no? so yung mga hormones ng buntis talagang magsushoot up yan mag-iiba-iba, magbabago-bago then mag expand yung pelvic no? kasi mag-give way sa birthing process ano pa? yung mga pimples diba? buhay yung buka natin may, bu may tumubo pa ulit no? bacteria no? cause ng pimple Ayan, mga chemical changes yan next formation of flame diba? kaya ingat-ingat tayo sa pagtatapon ng mga ano, mga alcohol bottles spray bottles tulad ng mga cologne No, yung mga ini-spray na cologne, mga perfume, may nakalagay doon na precaution, flammable. So, wag natin basa-basa itatapos sa may init na lugar kasi pwede siyang explosive. Okay? Hindi bomba. Ibig sabihin, pwede siyang sumabog, lalo na pag tinamaan siya ng heat. Okay? So, ayan. Another example pa, yung potassium. Uh, pag dinip natin sa cotton bus, then inan natin sa apoy, mag-aapoy din siya, ganun din yung sodium. Okay? So, yung formation of flame is an indication that there is chemical change. Next, formation of odor. Anong biological source mo? Alam, kilikili. O, namawis. May bacteria. O, yung mga odor molecules, mga ngamoy yan. Siyempre, bad odor. So, formation of odor is an indication na may nangyayari No? Eh, ito madalas sa puberty stage no? yung mga nagbabago yung mga hormones no? pero pag baby kahit pag poison ang, ang bango bango no? pero pag medyo ano na puberty stage na ayun na kailangan na natin gumamit ng ano, mga nilalagay sa kilikili na deodorant kanya antiperspirant pero mas best dyan syempre maglilinis tayo no? para mawala yung odor causing bacteria because formation of odor lalo na pag hindi mabango is an indication that there is a chemical change now we're going to uh, discuss the philosophers involved in discovering the matter or what's inside the matter and does it matter so here are the philosophers from the past of up to present from the past we have Leucippus and Democritus so mag teacher student tong dalawa na to for them nature consisted of two things and that is atom and void void yun yung pumapalibot dun sa atom actually ang tawag nila ay atomos kasi Greek sila so atomos and the void so yung atom ayun yung particle na binubuo o bumubuo sa nature at yung void yun yung lalagyan okay? so atom and the void aside from it for them atoms are physically but not geometrically indivisible. Yun. So, ganun yung structure ng atoms para sa 
kanila. Hindi, uh, pwedeng, pwede natin uh, mabago-bago physically yung isang shape ng object, pero geometrically, kung ano yung structure niya, yun na yun. Okay? There are many different kinds of atoms for them. Each of them had specific shape and size. And all atoms move randomly around in space. So, nakakalat daw siya sa ating space na may iba't ibang size o sukat at iba't ibang hugis. Yun ang buong buo ng nature. Kaya may nakikita tayong iba't ibang object. Kasi nga, binubuo siya ng iba't ibang uri ng atom. Yun ang pinakamaliit na bahagi ng isang object para sa kanila. For Democritus muna, bago si Leucippus, sabi ni Democritus, ang atoms daw ay indestructible at full. Puno siya. So, wala siyang empty space. No? Yung empty space, yun yung void na na tinutukoy niya kanina yung lalagyan. So, atoms are indestructible. So, hindi siya nasisira. Yun yung pinakamaliit na bahagi ng isang object or matter para sa kanila. Hindi na daw yung nasisira pa. Next. Naniniwala si Democritus na kahit anong maliit na piece ng isang matter ay pwede mo pa siyang ma-divide and then pag na-divide siya pwede mo pa ulit ma-divide sa hanggang siya na yung pinakamaliit na particles. So, end point na niya yun. Pag yun na yung pinakamaliit na bahagi na hindi mo na pwedeng ma-divide pa, yun na daw yung atom. Okay? Ang tawag na dito sa particle na yun ay atomos. Kasi Greek siya. Greek sila. Ni Lucipus. So, atomos which is a Greek word which means indivisible particle. Okay? Now, sabi naman ni Aristotle, naniniwala siya na yung matter was made up of either one of the elements that surrounding the, um, the, the planet. Yun yung earth, water, wind, fire. Or combination of these four. No? So, dito natin nakuha yung apoy, tubig, lupa, uh, ano pa, uh, apoy, tubig, lupa, hangin. Diba? Parang ano lang, encantadia. So, nagmula yan kay Aristotle. Pag pinagsama mo yung alinman sa mga combination na yan, makakabuo daw tayo ng uh, matter. So, yun naman ang para sa kanya. Elements. Okay? Next, dumating yung panahon na si La Lucipus, Democritus, and si Aristotle, mahabang panahon pinaniwalaan sila. Pero dumating yung time na andito na si John Dalton and pinatunayan niya na matter is made of very small particles called atoms. So, tama yung sila Lucipus and Democritus pero may mga differences no? for John Dalton yes matter is made up of very small particles called atoms atom is the smallest particle of an element that has all the properties of the element say for example oxygen element yun diba sa periodic table natin yung element na yon may pinakamaliit pa dun, ang tawag atom. Pero kung ano yung, kung oxygen yon ang atom niya, oxygen atom. ba diba? So, ang oxygen ay isang element, pinakamaliit na part niya is the oxygen atom. So, yung oxygen atom na yon binubuo na niya yung karamihan sa property na may kita mo sa element ng oxygen. Okay? Kasi nga, siya yung bubuo, yung atom ang bubuo dun sa matter na yun, dun sa element na yun, kung oxygen man yun. Today, we know that although atoms are very small, 
they are not indivisible. O yun yung pinagkaiba ni John Dalton concept of atom versus Democritus. Sabi kasi ni Democritus a while ago, uh, ano siya, indivisible. Pero kay John Dalton, yes, it's true that atom is the smallest particle of an element, but uh, they are not indivisible. Bakit? Kasi yung, yung atom, still, meron pa siyang smaller particles called subatomic particles. Okay? Yun yung proton, neutron, electron. Pe, atom pa rin, ha? Yung pinaka maliit. Ang sinasabi lang dito, may bahagi yung atom. Ang tawag doon, subatomic particles. The proton, neutron, and electrons. Napapatunayan pa ng iba pang mga uh, tawag dito, scientists na involved. Ayan, nasabi na natin to kanina, we know that although atoms are very small, they are not indivisible as Democritus thought. Rather, they consist of still smaller particles called the subatomic particles. Ayan. A atom, yung most elements, atom of most elements have the ability to combine with other atoms. Example, Oxygen, element yun, di ba? Pinakamaliit na bahagi ng oxygen na element ay oxygen atom. Yung atom na yun, pwede pa siyang makipag-combine sa iba pang uh, atom tulad ng hydrogen. Ang hydrogen ay isang element. Ang pinakamaliit na bahagi ng hydrogen element ay tinatawag na hydrogen atom. So, si oxygen atom pwede makikombine kay hydrogen na atom. O, di ba? So, makakabuo tayo ng example, uh, H2O or water. ba diba? Dalawang hydrogen, isang oxygen. So, makakabuo ka ng matter. Na ang tawag ay water. Next, atom can be measured in angstrom. Sabi natin kanina, ang, ang, ang matter ay pwedeng masukat. No? Kung ang matter ay nasusukat, yung pinakamaliit na bahagi niya na tinatawag na atom ay pwede rin masukat. Pero hindi siya sa centimeter, millimeter, hindi. Angstrom, yun yung unit niya. No? Gaano kaliit ang angstrom? Ang isang angstrom, katumbas ng um, equal siya sa 10 millionth of a millimeter. So, imagine mo yung, yung isang millimeter, halos tuldok na lang yun, di ba? Hindi pa yun. 10 million pa nun na ganun kaliit. No? 10 million na mas maliit sa millimeter. O, di ba? Microscopic na. Hindi na natin siya nakikita. Why are naked eye? Ganun kaliit ang atom. Na pag pinagsama-sama mo, makakabuo ka ng matter or the object na nakita na ating mga mata. Next, ano naman yung molecule? Naririnig natin yan kahit elementary. Molecule is a particle consisting of two or more atoms. So, yung mga atoms, sabi natin kanina, pwedeng mag-combine mag from other atoms pa. No? So, example, oxygen atom combines with two hydrogen atoms become H2O or what we call water. That water is a molecule. Water molecules. Yun. So, pag pinag-combine sila, may specific um, geometric arrangement yan. At hindi mo na yan ano, mababago. Yun at yun pa rin yun. Okay? Molecule is electrically neutral particle. It is the smallest particle of an element or compound that can exist independently. So, pinakamaliit is atom. Pag pinag-combine-combine mo, magiging molecule. Then, yung molecule na yun, ma mas malaki pa doon yung matter. Okay? So, say for example, uh, gaano ba sila kaliit? Yung mga atoms na yan. In a light microscope, ang makikita lang natin doon, ay magnification hanggang 1,500 times. 
hindi natin makikita yung atoms doon. Kasi sabi nga natin kanina, sinusukat ang atom using angstrom. Diba? And that is uh, 10 million of a millimeter. Eh kung 1,500 times lang ang zoom ng light microscope, hindi aabutin. How about electron microscope? Ang kaya niya magnification ay hanggang 1 million times. So, hindi pa rin natin makikita yung atom doon. Kasi nga, 10 million of a millimeter. Ganun siya kaliit. So, ano yung pwede? Ito na. C. Scanning Tunneling Microscope or what we call STM. Kaya niyang magnify hanggang 10 million times. Ayan, abot na yung atom dyan. Okay? Now, dahil wala naman tayo bawat isa sa ating bahay ng uh, what you call this STM or the scanning tunneling model I mean microscope meron tayong bubuuin model or the particle models of solid liquid gas so nauso yung mga ganitong um, drawings or illustration no? para maipakita natin sa ating uh, mga sa mga sudyante at sa kahit kaninang tao na ah, ito pala yung itsura ng solid ah, ito pala yung itsura ng liquid and gas no? naggagawa tayo ng mga illustrations para makita natin kung ano yung itsura ng particle na yun. so for the solid, ganyan the, the first one sa left so compactly arranged siya rigid siksik maayos, naka-arrange Fix ang shape, fix ang volume. Hindi mo na siya mai-squash, hindi mo na makakompress kasi compress na siya. How about liquid? Yung liquid, hindi siya ganun ka-rigid tulad ng solid. So, may konting space yan. Kaya siya medyo nakakagalaw. Uh, not rigid, no fixed shape kasi it takes the shape of the container. Fix din yung volume kasi kung 10 ml, 10 ml pa din siya kahit ilipat mo siya sa ibang lalagyan, no? Mananatiling yun ang kanyang volume. Cannot be squash kasi uh, medyo siksik rin to. Next, pagdating dun sa gas, they are uh, randomly arranged na. No? Pag sabing random, kalat-kalat. Yung liquid naman, medyo loosely pack lang kasi siya, no? May konting space lang siya. Pero dito sa gas, talagang random. No? Freely siya. And not rigid. No fixed shape. Kaya hindi mo siya agad-agad makukuha. Tapos ilalagay mo sa tabo. Hindi. Kasi mag -e escape din yan. Because you are freely moving. No fixed volume. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, pabili. Uh, 10 ml helium nga. Walang ganun. ba Walang ganun. So, can be squash. Bakit? Pwede pa siya makompress. Eh, ang dami pa niya spaces eh. So, yun yun. Uh, yan, yan pa lang yung mga simple um, description natin or comparison using the illustrations for the three states of matter. So, bakit natin pinapakita to? Para maintindihan natin yung properties niya. Na, ah, okay, kaya pala ganito yung solid kasi eto siya. O yung gas kaya pala um, mabilis siyang uh, hindi natin nahahawakan kasi ganyan pala yung structure niya. Ayan, ba? Now, yun, yun lang for today's lesson. You may now answer the activities. So, we have here activity 1, does it matter? So, may mga samples dyan sa column ng samples and then, lagay nyo lang kung solid, liquid, or gas siya yung physical state niya, identify the physical state of matter of the following samples by checking the proper box. So, tingnan nyo lang sample, checkan nyo kung solid siya, liquid, or gas, and then answer the guide questions 1 to 7. For the activity 2, the one on the right, what matters most? So, dito, pag-aaralan nyo lang yung illustration. Ayan yung illustration, ice cubes, um, yung ano to, ice cubes, glass of water, and vapor from hot coffee. 
Ayan, sa solid liquid gas yan. Then, answer the question 1, 2, 3, 4. Based from the illustration given. Then, activity 3. Moving or not moving. So, gumagalaw ba yung mga atoms doon sa solid, sa liquid, and sa gas? So, sundin nyo lang set up 1, 2, and 3. Kaya-kaya naman yung gawin sa bahay kasi matatagpuan naman yan mga materials na yan sa bahay nyo. Then, check your understanding. On page 7, you have to complete the following table in order to describe the three states of matter in terms of their mass, shape, volume, molecular arrangement, movement of particles. Ayan. So, asan dyan ang definite? Indefinite? Definite, ibig sabihin, yun talaga siya. Indefinite, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi siya naka-fix, no? Okay. Uh, pagdating sa shape, ganun din. Definite shape, indefinite shape. Sa mass naman, lagay nyo lang definite, indefinite. Okay na yun. Pag volume naman, lagay nyo kung fixed volume, no fixed volume. yon Tapos sa molecular arrangement, kung sila ay closely packed, uh, loosely pack, randomly arrange, ayan. Yung binigay kong example kanina na may illustration, ayun yun. And diniscuss ko rin. So, ayan, binibigay ko na yung mga, mga pwedeng choices nyo. Closely pack, loosely pack, okay? Randomly arrange or freely. Uh, movement of particles. Okay? Uh, ano ba yung mga pwedeng ilagay dyan? Uh, pwedeng compressed, okay? Uh, pwedeng move but in in fixed position pwedeng ganun pwedeng naman they move freely okay they move fast pwede din no so yung mga sinasabi ko ngayon yun yung mga pwedeng yung ilagay okay na maglagay kung pang solid siya pang liquid or gas and then answer the the questions below dun sa part B 1 2 3 Ayan, so remember this one, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. It is also made up of tiny particles called atoms. So, pinakamalit, atoms, sunod, molecules, then matter na yung malaki. These particles are moving at all times. O, ayan na, may clue na kayo dun sa isasagot nyo kanina, dun sa activity. Ulitin ko ah, these particles are moving all the time and have spaces between them. These particles also attract each other. So, kahit solid siya, liquid or gas, lahat yan, lahat ng atoms gumagalaw. Kanya-kanyang ano lang yan. Kanya-kanyang bilis, kanya-kanyang bagal, tsaka depende sa arrangement, no? At lagi silang may spaces sa pagitan nila. Even solids, may spaces yan. Yun nga lang, mas siksik, ba? And particles attract each other. Next. Characteristic of solid, liquid, and gas. Yan, nasabi ko na to kanina. Uh, yung solid, may fixed shape and volume. Ayan. So, basahin nyo muna to, itong part na to, bago nyo sagutan yung activities, no? Kasi, andito yung mga clues. Dito sa remember. Solid has fixed shape and volume is also rigid, so which means particles are locked into place. It is not easily compressible because compressed na siya. It has a little free space between particles. It does not flow easily. Kasi solid nga, no? So, hindi siya magpo-flow agad. Liquid. Liquid assumes the shape of its container. Liquid particles can move or slide past one another is not easily compressible. So, ganun din. Mahirap din siyang siksikin kasi medyo siksik to. Although, may konting free space between the particles. This time, it flows easily. So, tumutulo siya. Gas. Gas assumes the shape of its container. So, ganun din, no? Tinitake niya yung shape ng container. The particles of gas can move freely. It is easily compressible. There is a lot of free space between particles. May kita naman natin sa illustration. Then, for the reflection, yan, sagutan nyo lang yan. 
fill up the cards uh, write the the things you learned write two things that still confusing to you write one thing you enjoyed in the lesson and then for the post test let me read to you let's answer all together one if water is placed in a freezer it will change from one state of matter to another which are the correct changes of matter that the water will go through a solid to gas b liquid to solid c gas to liquid d solid to liquid number two which of the following is a property of matter a mass and volume b melting point and work c volume and energy d force and acceleration number three which statement is correct about the molecules of gas? A. The molecules are randomly moving. B. The molecules are closely packed. C. The molecules are loosely packed. Or D. The molecules are moving in a low speed. 4. What particle of state of matter is shown in the illustration? Ayan, in drawing sa right. A. Gas B. Plasma C. Solid D. Liquid And number 5, what happens to the glass of water when it is accidentally spilled on the ground? A. It will not flow B. It will flow easily C. It will evaporate or D. It will turn into ice Now, if you are true answering, let's answer the post test for number 1, correct answer is B, liquid to solid. For number 2, it's A, mass and volume. For number 3, it's A, the molecules randomly moving. Number 4, it's C, solid. And number 5, it's B, it will flow easily. Now, I hope you learned something about the three states of matter. Or, uh, does matter matter? The answer is yes. Matter matters. Okay? So, if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to chat your teacher about the confusing topics. Have a nice day and bye!